Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a raid Shadow Legends video. Looks like we got the fifth anniversary shenanigans coming through. We got a new fusion who honestly looks freaking cool. We'll get into that in a minute. And we've also got some new events and stuff coming through. So I guess I'll start by just kind of like sharing with you this little snippet uh, that they dropped on their socials yes, uh, yesterday. I was going to do a video on this anyway today. I thought, just, just wait. Let's just wait to see if we actually get some info because we didn't have any info. We literally just had this. Ring the bell. And then we see Armand's the magnificent fortune teller bard vagabond. I, I dropped a little sneaky uh, tweet. I'm not calling it an X. I'm calling it a tweet yesterday saying, are we now getting a pirate faction? Anyway. You can see there's a whole bunch of stuff. Fifth anniversary going on. Festival of Creation. And that's basically all we got. So there you go. So Raid's coming into its fifth anniversary. And as part of this, we're going to grab the fusion. So let's talk about uh, what's going on here. So it says here, as we're getting closer to Raid's fifth anniversary celebrations and the Festival of Creation is, is about to start, we want to introduce a special guest. And that is going to be Armand's The Magnificent. Let's let him do a spin. Look at the detail on this dude, by the way. Very cool. He's got his keys. He's got his knickknacks. He's got his little pearl bracelet. Banjo on his back. Whirly blade, which I don't know if that's actually going to work, dude, but looks cool. Um, anyway, Armand looking pretty sweet there. So it says here, uh, what are they saying about him? Armand's a magnificent fortune teller, bard, vagabond, and just a man with extraordinary personality who will become a valuable asset to your roster. Arena is definitely his place to shine. His skill set is designed to fully control the enemy team. Oh, and believe me, he has some pretty nice tricks up his sleeve as well. Get into that in a second. You better watch yourself or you might also be turned into a sheep. Oh dear. Um, and it says here, the fusion's gonna start on Thursday, the 7th of March. So next Thursday, um, it says here as well, please note the format of this fusion will be a bit different to stuff you're already familiar with. Oh no, sorry. The format of this fusion will be a bit different, but already familiar to you. <laughs> How can it be a bit different and familiar at the same time? I don't know. Anyway, it says just as usual, you'll need to fuse the legendary champion from epic champions while you'll need to summon the epic champions from fragments. Okay, so it's going to be a fragment collector for the epics and then you summon the epics into the legendary so kind of like a hybrid i guess fragments and um epics coming in together i don't know the four epics yet hopefully we'll get to see those soon as well and hopefully they will be good um okay that's it that's it so let's have a look at the actual doc there and let's see what's going down weird blade <laughs> that's about right um what we got here fifth 55% when booked chance of increasing the cooldown of a random active skill by two turns. Also gives him a turn meter fill. Uh, fills his champion turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So we would get a 10% or a 20%. But I guess it's pretty much always 20%. Is there a reason why you wouldn't get 20%? I don't know, really. I guess if the if a, uh, ability does not have a full two turns worth of cooldown to... to hit yet but anyway pretty valuable a1 honestly locking someone out with his a1 pretty massive greatest hits here books down to a three turn attacks all enemies steals all turn meter off each target whoa let that sink in for a second steals all turn meter of each target i've already lost their freaking mind so basically what that means is you're resetting everybody's turn meter back down to zero whilst making sure basically every single time he does his ability, he will go again, basically. So steals all turn meter except sheeps. Also, place, also places a stun on all enemies that are not under a sheep. Not only are you resetting everybody's turn meter back to zero, you're also stunning everybody for a turn as well. Raid, have you absolutely gone berserk? Is this the 1st of April? No, it's the 1st of March. What is going on with this champ? 
I've only read two steals. I'm already like, how is this guy not a void legendary? What the hell is that? Oh my god, that is gonna be insane. Absolutely insane. All right, third steal then. For my next trick. Places a sheep on an enemy for a turn. So we've now got someone bringing in the polymorph as an ability. They're, they're doubling down. They love polymorph. They are absolutely doubling down on it. Then books up to 100% chance of removing all buffs from all enemies. Fills his champions terminated by 5% for each buff removed. Okay. So you, sheep's one cleans buffs off of everyone else. Gets a bunch of turn meter. Potentially, let's say you clean off three buffs of everyone else. So you're talking about 45% turn meter feel off that as well. Master of Ceremonies here. Whenever a sheep debuff is removed or expires on an enemy, increase a cooldown of a random steal on that enemy to its max. Oh my god. What the hell is going on with this champ? Builds this champion's turn meter by 10% for each turn added to the cooldown. So probably get like about 20 to 20 to 40%. Um, turn meter feel there. If there are multiple champions on the team with the skill, only one will do it. 28% speed in arena. Oh my god, this is like, I mean, he's full arena, right? He's, I say he's full arena. I tell you what, this A2 is insane for Doom Tower, like waves, like, and for control of any waves. It's not just arena. If you get this guy and you're struggling to do any wave based content, he is absolutely nuts for it. Like Faction Wars, Doom Tower, waves leading up to bosses. He is absolutely nuts for it. He's not that great against bosses because he doesn't bring a lot that will work on bosses. The lockout is okay, I guess, for the dragon in Doom Tower. You know the one with Eternal Dragon? Yeah, that's pretty good on an A1 there. The rest of it, though, is basically completely wave based, PvP based but not uh, boss-based. Wow. Amans the Magnificent. Have Raid absolutely lost their freaking minds? What do you think? Um, damn. So that's not it, though. That's not it for the video. If you already turned off, you missed something big. Okay, we've got something big going down as well as a change with Awakenings. We are going to have... I did hint towards seeing some stuff like this in the code, by the way, a couple of times. We're going to have a boost to Awakenings coming up. So it says, hey, how are you doing, friends? Doesn't actually say that. Um, we are bringing news about a new type of event that will have its launch next week. We're introducing a new type of boost, the Awakening Boost. When an Awakening Boost is active, your chances of getting souls of a specific rank from Soul Stones will be temporarily, uh, temporarily increased. So on Tuesday... We are planning to launch the first Awakening Boost event, giving you a two times chance to get a perfect six star soul. Very specific here, actually. Two times chance to get a perfect six star soul from mortal and immortal soul stones. So, um, so what are they actually saying here? Normally, to get a six star is 0.75%. And... 6%. So it's going to go to 1.5 and 12%. Just that uh, looks like that's the only thing that's being changed. They're not up in any other odds. It's literally just, I guess they're taking from the bottom, adding it to the top. I'm guessing there's no more info than that. Um, but it does say here, and that's pretty significant, by the way, to move this into, you know, uh, it's still massively low, but. Yeah, you know, obviously the six star souls are where it's at, but there's no change as far as I can see to any of these numbers. So it's still heavily weighted that it's going to be a rare. You know, this hasn't become suddenly great, but it's improvement. Um, and it's stuff that, you know, we want to see, honestly. When you start to add in, the wish list is now an improvement as well. Things are they're starting to understand that the current system isn't quite good and it needs improving. So hopefully they keep going in this direction. Uh, still not enough. Hopefully, I keep going in this direction. I just say here as well, please note this boost applies to the soul's rank regardless of its rarity. Okay, damn. Big, big fusion. Like, I hate to call it out because I you call it out so often, but it's got to be a must get fusion for anyone who wants to play the game and play competitively in PvP. 
he will appear in the meta in PvP in some way. Surely. Surely he, he has to, right? So uh, if you're a PvPer, I think you've got to get involved. And you know what? Something like my free-to-play account, he is a wave like controller like no one else. It's insane. So if I could do it on my free-to-play, it would be massive as well. Um, anyone who's playing the game is going to be a really, really useful champion for a ton of different areas. But he's not a boss killer. Anyway, that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And give me an old thumbs up. Why not? <laughs> I'll catch you later.